Okay, so for this unboxing video, we are celebrating the 20th anniversary of Linkin Park's Hybrid Theory, which was one of the most influential albums of my generation, I want to say, and I don't think the rock landscape would be quite the same um, if it weren't for this album specifically, but tell me, my guitarist for A Haunting on Mars, by the way, <laughs> Because, um, I mean, you've got some feelings about this band and about this album specifically, which is why I wanted you to join me in, in, a, in a, having the appreciation for this album and all that. Um, so cool. tell me which, yeah, tell me what, t tell me about, uh, tell me how you feel about this band. Well, I first become a, became aware of them when they played, when One Step Closer just broke through on the radio in the, in the year 2000. And then I heard Paper Cut, saw the music video, and I was like, okay. I can dig it. I can dig it. I was definitely curious enough to want to get the album. And then I heard the album and I was like pretty impressed. I would say that uh, for as ba a band as uh, young as they are considerably, because I'd say, yeah, 20 years, the band, uh, professionally. I would say that uh, Chester's Fry Scream is, is alone is legendary enough against bands that are 30 years old. So, yeah, yeah, this band has made an impact, and they definitely made an impact on me. And there's some killer songs on this album, so uh, we'll get to that later. But, but as a band, they definitely deserve the uh, recognition they have received, for sure. So for a little bit of background on my history listening to this band, I actually got into them after Meteora had come out. Of course, I had heard In the End on the radio a lot. It was a very new thing. I never heard them mix uh, rock and rap the way they did. And a lot of people hadn't at the time. It did exist, but never in this huge mainstream high production value sort of way. So it made a lot of waves and it became this huge, huge thing. But at the time I didn't know who the band was. But after they had come out with uh, Breaking the Habit as a single and then of course, you know, Meteora, I had really gotten into it. And then I did some research online and I heard the other songs off that album and I, and I bought it as soon as I could find it. Um, so that's actually what got me into it. Um, I actually liked Meteor. I still, to this day, I like Meteor a little bit more than Hybrid Theory. So I actually hope they do one for Meteor up because I will buy that too. <laughs> um, for the same price, if not even, you know, $20 more, I'll buy it for $20 more. <laughs> but um, that is kind of my history with them and how they got, you know, uh, how they started to influence me. So with that said, let's take a look into this box. <clears throat> Look at this, just just like this uh, foil plate cover. <laughs> I love that. So yeah, I definitely like like the cover, definitely. <clears throat> and this is like uh, definitely a unique kind of. I mean, it's the album cover, but this is like, you know, this is letting you know this is special. Yeah. And then there's that. And there's this booklet here with. With, uh, it's mostly an art book, but there's some notes in there as well. I haven't really had taken the time to read them yet. But there's like a lot of really interesting things there. Um, scans from notebooks they've had. It's it's, a, it's very the whole thing is very commemorative, and in that booklet itself is pretty pretty cool. Yeah, definitely. And then you've got these lithographs. Sure with these little bits of art, uh, which is kind of variations on the Dragonfly Soldier design, a uh, picture of the band themselves. I suppose if you wanted to, you could get these signed when, you know, they start touring again, rest in peace Chester. I don't know who they're gonna get to fill in for vocals though. I keep hearing that they are gonna have some, in, still have some incarnation of Lincoln Park, but yeah, and then there's this poster. <clears throat> uh, I'm like trying to look yeah. at this like <laughs> head on, like exactly what it's supposed to be, but it looks like, okay, I see, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> it's just with his hands up, holding the mic. His mic, because it's like blocking his face completely. That's yeah. interesting. Yeah, it was like, it was like from a shot where he was like, the photographer was like down here. Right. <laughs> but it was very well centered, for sure. And talking about his fry scream, like I mean, he was probably doing that. Yeah, I can't do it. 
Like, that's so... You have to have a very tight control over your, uh, over your vocal cords to do that, or just... Either that, or you just have to have a natural... I'm, I'm, I'm not kidding at all. His fry scream literally alone is, is what made this band so like recognizable. I mean, yeah, I would say it's as recognizable as I don't know uh, Jonathan Davis, Jonathan Davis's Mortuary vocals, or or uh, you know Corey Taylor's scream, or any band that's even older than Lincoln Park. But, but his fry scream is that legendary. Besides that, what else uh, did you pick up from them musically? Because I know they inspired you to a point. So, as a guitarist, there wasn't a whole lot initially that inspired me. But I do admire Brad Delson's guitar playing on this album because while it is somewhat basic, it gets the job done because it's in service of the songs. You don't have to be an amazing, you know, Ingwe Malmsteen to be a good guitar player. He had a... I remember at the time that Linkin Park was popular, he had a, a column in Guitar World, and I used to read it, and and some of the things he said did I did respond to as a guitarist. Like, he would talk about his work ethic, and... And even though some of their riffs are pretty basic, though, I mean, he really got the job done, and, and he's he's a pretty methodical, disciplined guitar player. Also, just really love the uh, dynamics. The one thing about this album, because I listened to it on the drive over, the one thing about this album that I still love to this day is dynamics. And this band definitely, this this album definitely did that. So I think my favorite addition to this box set would be the Hybrid Theory EP for the first time on vinyl. Now, you weren't going to get your hands on a copy of the original Hybrid Theory EP unless you were at those original shows where they had first started out. I mean, this was right around the time they changed their name to Lincoln Park, because before that they were called Zero. Um, and this was really, really difficult to find. Um, so unless you were really close to the band or you were at those early small venue shows, you weren't going to get your hand on this at all. Um, and then after that, it was out of print for a very, very long time. And it stayed out of print up until the release of this anniversary. Now, you were able to get it on iTunes eventually, but most people weren't. Most people were just pirating it. Um, so... So getting to hear these again, and it was interesting because a part of me is like the only song that actually made it onto the full length album. So this is an even more special, uh, more special addition to this package. And one of the things that made me want to get this box set so much was how the sheer amount of content that they packed into it because it's everything leading up to the album as well as during the, during the tours for the album as well as things, you know, after the fact. Because there's bonus footage of shows they've shot for, there's just all sorts of things all in here. So besides the DVDs, because I love the live DVDs they included, I gotta say, I think uh, the Hybrid Theory EP on vinyl is probably my favorite edition, simply for the nostalgia, and it's just a wonderful way to commemorate what made this band, you know, blossom in its early days. But, you know, the inception of these ideas that would become this huge thing that no one knew at the time would get as big as it did. Right. Speaking of things they included with this, not just specifically Hybrid Theory, that's pretty cool. They put the reanimation album in here. Yeah. I, mean, I remember I know, playing World of Warcraft last in that. <laughs> I know this album, if you want to call it that, has got a lot of but it has a lot of merit. I mean, I, uh, I definitely think they, it's cool that they include this for sure. And, uh, yeah, I need to hear this again. Because I, I didn't even know about this, this One Step Closer remix with Jonathan Davis, I guess. Oh, yeah, it's really huh. cool. I really like it. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Speaking of uh, speaking of commemorative 
things that you're not going to get at your hands oh, on. There is an wow. old sampler from the street team that was a cassette only, only had two. It only oh, had two. Awesome. It only had two tracks on it. It was One Step Closer and With You. Now, you weren't going to get this unless you were part of the street team. It's really cute that they went ahead and reproduced that just for this box set. And that's cool. With You is one of my favorite songs on the album. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. It is a cool song. Kind of neat. Yeah. yeah. I think which, 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 which song is my favorite from this album? Well, it's, I'd say With You, By Myself, and Forgotten kind of my phase and the album paper cut obviously yeah that was a huge one i think a place for my head was one that i didn't like that much when i first heard it i was like it's all right but it's like i didn't like it as many as much as others but the more i heard it the more i related to it and uh, the more i appreciated like some of the melodies in it and so it's that one that one grew on me in a special way i think I mean, I think the whole album, like, start to finish, grew on me a lot over the years, and it still holds up for me now. Obviously, I loved it the most when I was, you know, 17, but, you know, as, as someone who's about to turn 30 very soon, I, it's still, this whole album still rings true enough for me to buy this whole box set to commemorate its release 20 years later. Um, I yeah, think, I will say that is kind of funny you mention that, but uh, this definitely was the quintessential kind of rock album to have when you were a teenager. But it is still good and still holds up well. But yeah, if, if, if you were a teenager in the early 2000s or mid 2000s, or even like a preteen, I mean, this, this is definitely you know, your stuff. Yeah. I think Points of Authority and Crawling are probably my top two from this album, personally. Especially points of authority. I love, I love the synth on it, uh, and I love the, I just love the sentiment because I mean I think that was a huge thing for a lot of people at the time. Like primarily, primarily, I mean if you were still a kid yourself and in high school or whatever, I mean you always, everyone's got this put. There's always going to be this generational fissure. I don't know if it's the right word. This generational schism. You're, all, you're always going to have this issue where you don't see eye to eye with the generation before you because they have these different expectations and, and you know, that is, th that whole conflict, it's an inner conflict because you don't want to disappoint these people, but, and you do know that they want the best for you, but at the same time you disagree with them on a number of things because, you know, with your younger eyes you're seeing things from a different perspective. And it's not necessarily that you're lacking information that they have. Sometimes it is the case, but sometimes it's a matter of you're seeing something that they're not able to because of the way they grew up. So your identity, your not your identity, your yeah, actually that would be too, uh, but your uh, your perspective is going to be skewed in a certain way. So it's like it's a difference between you know younger people are seeing one thing and you want to address that one thing a certain way, and the other generation's not seeing what we're seeing. And therefore, they don't understand why we want to address it the way it is. That is that is the spirit of this whole album, which in essence is also the spirit of rock and roll itself. Um, so it's th this being part of a continuum, I mean, there was so much gatekeeping. When this band came out, there were so many people who loved it, and then there was other people who absolutely hated it. They thought it was overproduced. They hated the rap. Um, they were like, if this is going to be what... Uh, this is going to be what rock and roll becomes. I want to be a part of it. Uh, Lincoln Park was at the mainstream spearhead of that whole schism. So it's like I think that you know songs like Points of Authority um, and obviously on the follow up album Meteora Numb. Um, it really embodied that. It embodied that spirit. You know that 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 part of us that a lot of us we just grow out of over over the years and then. And then there's a lot of us that, you know, like myself, that, you know, make a whole web series about how we're not. <laughs> so, oh, they also, also they've got the CDs. They've got, uh, obviously, oh, cool. Hybrid Theory. Okay, and so a little, and a little, and CDs. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, and they also were animations. And my, the one I was most excited about, B-Sides and Rarities. So, I mean, this is like old demos and stuff. Um, different mixes that people did. Um, there's the 1999 demo for Step Up, uh, My December, which was like a B-side, that good luck finding that on a, on, a, 
well, on something professionally produced. I forget how people were getting it before, but yeah, that's on there. Uh, Marilyn Manson did a remix of By Myself. Oh, wow. That's on here. Interesting. Yeah. Wow, that's a great song to re do a remix of. And also, we've got rare songs that are just different mixes and like early stuff that came while they were still called Zero. Like, you, oh. you, like I mean, there's all that stuff on, on little rarities. Rarities disc there, which is what I was really excited for to be able to be able to legitimately hear that stuff. Uh, so it's like I remember knowing about those things, and it was kind of like this sort of sought after thing on the internet. And so it's like these are legitimately available now. And it was like I believe they were only available in this box set. A couple of those songs made it on to like the standard edition of the 25th anniversary version of the, of the, of the album that came out not too long ago. But uh, but you know, to get these, to get the forgotten demos, and to and to get the the rarities disc that came in this box set alone. So and of course you've got Project Revolution, which has a live show from the Project Revolution show, which is the entire album, which is the whole album in its entirety, as well as a couple other songs. Um, par uh, frat party at Pancake Festival. It's another show. Um, also on the, also on the other DVD, there's like a lot of behind the scenes stuff which I really enjoyed. And then there's this other one that's got like two separate shows. One at Rock at uh, the Fillmore in 2001 and Rock AM Ring, and also in 2001. That's and that's on there. And it came with a download code. Oh, cool. So I was able to download the entire thing, and I've got oh. and I've got that on an MP3 CD that I burned from my car. Oh, so you used the you have used this code already? Yep, I have used that code. And uh, and they made a little oh, a little land nice. a little thing to put on a lanyard because I mean awesome. we, we can't they can't tour. Yeah. Uh, we can't go to shows. Um, but they gave them a little they recreated the product revolution all access pass. Uh, so there's that too. So it's a little cute little bonus that's nice to have. Do you have a few of these that you could add or add this to that collection? I can't remember if you had any. Um, concert. Uh, you have a Demon uh, Hunter one. I thought. Yeah, I have a Demon Hunter one. That's in a that's in a, a shadow box that okay. I put together for that event and. I have one from Fiesta Equestria, <laughs> which was a pony convention. Oh, right, right. I thought you had No, I think those are, those, those are literally it. One thing I want, another thing, one last thing I wanted to add was, I would say that <clears throat> most fans will agree that pre-Minutes to Midnight era Lincoln Park is pretty special. And uh, if you were... If you were into the band at the time, then you were considered an older fan. If you had, if you bought their albums or anything at the time, then, then that's certainly special. And I have one such memory because I've seen them live. I, I, that's something I have over Spooky. Yeah, that he doesn't. I never have. got to. He never got to see. I will never. Live. I'll never you have know, a similar experience like because, that. Because because I've seen him not right. only. Live, but obviously Chester was with him, and and again, this is before Min Minutes to Midnight. This was that era, that that prime era that fans were right up to Chester's death were still hoping the band would go back to. And uh, but I did see them for uh, when they were touring for Meteora in uh, 2003. They uh, were on the uh, on the Summer Sanitarium tour. Metallica's Summer Sanitarium Tour in 2003, and, uh, you know, I gotta be honest, uh, they had, uh, it was Limp Bizkit, Deftones, Lincoln Park, and I think, uh, Mark Bay was there too. And I gotta be honest, I was more excited for Lincoln Park, Mark Bay, Deftones, than Metallica, they were the headline. And, yeah, I gotta say, I'll always cherish this this concert because A, it was during that era that we all love so much, and B, well, Chester's no longer with us, so that is even more special to me. And I'm 
sorry, Spooky never got a chance to see him live. A, with Chester, and B, he hasn't seen him live, period. And if you were lucky enough to see them live, then that's definitely awesome. And I, I'm definitely lucky enough to say that. And uh, it was a great show, and, and uh, yeah, nothing bad to say about it. I will say, after, after the fact that uh, I've seen them, they're definitely a great live band. I say that to the people out there who weren't really a fan of them, like, in the studio, because of all the commercial kind of sounding production. They are a great live band. They really, to all the naysayers out there, they prove that they can hold their hands and hold, hold them down against any of the really heavy bands out there. Great live band. And for a band that has, like, so much uh, emphasis on electronic instrumentation and loops and samples, I mean, uh, Mr. Han, he reproduces all of those samples. He reproduces all of those since he did that all live, and I only got to see that from the DVDs that are in here. Because once on the day I opened this up, I went through and watched all the DVDs. Um, uh, and it was just amazing to watch it. It's like, I imagine it must have been really, really cool to be like on that side of the stage and watch him do that yeah. live. I mean, I mean, no disrespect to the guitar, the guitarist and the bassist. I mean, there was good stuff and no, no diss to the drummer either. But you see people play those instruments live all the time. Right. And they did really well. It worked really well with the music they were playing. But, I mean, to see a DJ alongside them, he wasn't, okay, hit the play button on, you know, one track that, you know, goes through all the digital effects and the, you know, the instrumentation of the synth and whatever, or just pressing start on a on like a sample drum track because there was some of that in there too no it he was actually playing the notes on a drum track. so it's like on different songs that had synth notes on them he was playing those right there all the scratching completely reproduced i mean it's not like you just took a backing track from okay here's the here's the not bass and guitar and drum stuff and not vocal stuff here's all the not all of that you know what i'm saying we're just going to mix that down into a stereo back from the track. You hit play when you start and you play it. Right. Um, that's it's, it's the bog standard. It's the easiest thing to do. But I mean, now this is an actual DJ on stage reproducing all of that. So everything that they were doing um, from all of that to all the, uh, all the, rest, yeah, the rest of the instrumentation, all of the vocals, everything was completely reproduced. And it still sounded really close to the album. And they were able to pause for moments, keep songs going, or keep instruments playing, and say, this is so-and-so on on bass, this is so-and-so on guitar, this is so-and-so, and they were able to kind of play around with it, or they were able to pause for a moment, go into half of a cover of a song to make a joke, and then go right back into their, their song. Like, they were able to reproduce this whole live experience, and it's like, it's a shame I never got to see it, but I mean, yeah. back when they were relevant, I wasn't really able to do any of that stuff. Um, but that's another story. I was really far, by the way. Sadly, I was very far when I seen them live. The one time I saw them live, I was very, very far. They were practically the size of ants. But I, I mean, I still seen them, and I didn't. Sadly, I didn't get to see you know the close-ups that you're talking about with Joseph with Han, you know. And uh, I wish I had you know like moments like that. Still, we'll cherish it. It's still great that I was there at all. Huh. Yeah. That was fun. Yeah, we can still watch the DVDs. Next time we come over, we can yeah. watch them. <laughs> Sound. <laughs> we, should, we, we, should watch, we should watch at least one of the shows. Sound. <laughs> yeah, well, thank you for joining us with this. And happy 20th birthday to this Yes, record. that's right. It is 20 years. And not quite to the month, but pretty close. Yep. So happy birthday, happy birthday, 20th birthday, and yeah, 20th anniversary to Hybrid Theory.